I would like to continue working with our DSR program. The last time I was showing two possible methods uh, how to detect that our TSR is already in memory. And I noted that if we try to just detect if mm, the value in the interrupt table points to uh, a program that looks like our TSR, then we would not be able to detect it when uh, some other program hooks the same interrupt even if it hooks it in a way that uh, it changes calls uh, the previous value of the interrupt so our TSR could still be working but we would not detect it this way for this reason we used uh, this method of detection where we call a known fun function. And I mentioned that each of the two methods has uh, advantages but also flaws. And the flow of this method is that while we are going to detect our program even when the interrupt is hooked by something else but still the functions are called, when we use our function to uninstall our TSR, we restore the vector and if there was another TSR loaded that hooked the same vector, we are going to break it because we restore vector to the state uh, what it was before our TSR was installed. So the other TSR is completely forgotten then. Of course, we could not care about other TSRs, but we want to play nice here. So we should avoid breaking other TSR when uh, it has hooked the same interrupt as we. Therefore we should add some check here. Just before uninstalling, attempting to uninstall, we should check whether uh, the interrupt vector is still as we have set it up and not hooked by something else and if something else is there then we should abort and not uninstall and just signal that uh, that perhaps someone should attempt uninstall TSRs in reverse order for it to work. Mm. Ah, plus two because we are checking the segment portion. So if segment of any of the two vectors is not our code segment, then we de decide that we cannot uninstall the program. Let's see, we need to restore the two segment registers and
we also need some time of some kind of return code. Let's say that here we return one and here we return zero. And then we can check here. If x is zero, then it failed. Fail. I'm making a lot of copy-paste coding just to make it quicker. Alright, so now we should be safe not breaking another TSR if there is some other TSR interrupting, intercepting the same interrupts as we. Another interesting detail is here. You may notice that we are freeing this, our segment but this code is still in our segment. So we are executing code that resides in free memory. In a modern operating system, this would be more likely to fail and we would see that we have a problem here. In case of system like DOS, that is single task operating system, there is no other task that uh, that could write something to this memory so even even though we we have just freed the block the the code is still here there is also nothing there are no attributes on, of memory that could prevent it from being executed this is why this works If we want it to be completely safe, we should change it in so that it would not execute code in a freed memory. And the trick to do this could be to just jump to interrupt to one handler and let it irate instead of our code. But not, not in this case, because we need to restore ES register anyway. So you see that the things were tricky, but because of no protections and generally more freestyle approach to everything, things were often done this way just not caring because there there was nothing that could punish us for doing this mm. Oh, I, I think I know another good method how we could uh, do it. Let's just use this register, which is zero when we cannot uninstall, to return segment that we need to free. And use this return code here.
this should be nice and safe. Okay, let's try it. Our clock is fast now. We have the SR, the SR installed. No, could not be uninstalled. Now oh, perhaps there is another mistake here because it should have managed to uninstall it. Oh, of course, <laughs> again, a similar mistake and like the other day. Not start vector needs to be compared, but this one. Well, I need to restart the machine because PSR is already in bad version in memory. Great. It has uninstalled itself. Oh no! The vectors are not hooked, but the memory stayed allocated. Another problem. So here we should be returning CS register. Oh, bad order of operations. I messed with AX register before I use it. So let's install it once more. This is a second copy, but the first one has no hook vectors. And uh, let's try to remove the second copy. Okay, it all worked this time. <clears throat> there is one more thing mm, concerning freeing memory. If we look at this function that we are using terminate and stay resident in Ralph Brown's reference, there is one note that most TSRs can save some memory by releasing their environment block before terminating. So this hints that Mm, the segment of program segment prefix is not the only memory block that DOS allocates for a program. There is also a, s a segment that has a copy of environment uh, variables and we should free this. Mm, well, the resident, resident portion of our program does not use environment, so we can just free this while installing our TSR. Let's take a look at this table, 01378. Oh, it's here. This is program segment prefix. It should have environment somewhere. 
Yes. Add offset to C. So we should be freeing this. This is the segments to free. We are using this function to free it. This is more or less complete PSR. It plays nice, it frees all the memory it can free. It tries not to break other TSRs. Like, we broke this TSR earlier because of a bug. This is an example of broken TSR. Some other program has removed its hook from the interrupt table, but it stayed in memory. Oh, one more detail. Why am I hooking interrupt 1.6 here? Uh, earlier we were using a different interrupt. One in a high range of numbers to minimize a risk of collision with some other program. But the point is that not all interrupt vectors in interrupt table under DOS are actual functions that you can call. Many of them are just pointers to some data that should never be executed. So these are interrupts that should never be called directly. So the safest, when we want to add some functions for our program to, that it can detect itself, the safest is to use one of known interrupts that already have some functions and we just know that we can add to them. Detect our functions, if not, if not uh, detected, then jump to previous handler and let it handle the other functions. This also lets us overwrite some functions. Let's try this trick once more. Let's make another TSR that does not hook IRQ. Let's also change this magic values to distinguish if it from the previous TSR. And now we are hooking interrupt one six. If we take a look 
add the reference. This is a interrupt that is used to read values of keystrokes. Either a raw value that came from keyboard or a converted ASCII character. We can try to intercept this function. Now, first let's call origin our handler so that we really read a key from the buffer. As I mentioned last time, we need to push flags on stack for this to work because I read instruction is not a regular read, but it additionally restores flags from the stack, so it expects them there. I see your question, but uh, please wait a second. I, I would like to finish this first and then I might answer your question. Now let's say that we replace letter Q when it is pressed on keyboard. Let's replace it with some character that cannot be easily inputted <laughs> to a keyboard. Alright, we are modifying just flux, so this should not break anything. Well, here Q still works. But TSR is in memory. Well, apparently this program does not use function zero to read keystrokes. But uh, let's take another look at the reference. This interrupts has several, several more functions. Well, there is function 10 get enhanced keystroke. Perhaps a more modern program is <laughs> modern, re relatively modern, is using this function instead. So let's hook enhanced keystroke to. We did not remove it earlier. Oh, <laughs> I did call. I forgot to replace it in one place. I did call the function of the other one.
Okay, let's restart machine so we have a clean state. Okay, now I'm pressing Q, but it inserts this special character. So hooking worked. Yeah, hooking worked, but uninstalling did not work again. Oh yeah, I'm checking. I'm checking too much here. <laughs> Another restart. This is my Q key. And it's back to normal. <clears throat> Great. So this was an example of function hooking, overriding. Well, in modern operating system you can also make some hooks, but usually you, you need to use API to make them and you need to have permissions to use that API, etc. While here in DOS you just write to interrupt table directly. And it's up to you to play nice and respect the other programs in the environment. As for your earlier question, then yes, it, it is possible that there would be some interrupt function, perhaps IRQ handler, that would reuse memory that you have just freed, but this would be very unusual. But this is the reason why in DOS it would be so frequent to just have programs breaking, crashing, restarting computer out of nowhere. It is because mm, you are usually not punished by making s some assumptions like that you can still use a <laughs> memory block that you just freed for a couple of thing <laughs> for a couple of, of ticks, processor ticks, let's say. So, very often programs were well, not caring about being perfect in every such detail. And then you would have a uh, once in a blue moon si situation where something would uh, break the assumptions and, and suddenly so something was crashing. But yeah, the way we made it this TSR finally, after many corrections, I think this should be safe, because this uninstall functions just returns the address of memory block to flee, and this is the other instance of the same program that frees that memory, so this is certainly safe. <clears throat> now, the, the access in real mode to all the machine was not only access to all of memory, but also to all devices. We have already been doing a little of device programming mm, in the IRQ handler, where we were telling interrupt controller that the IRQ interrupt has been handled correctly.
Well, to be honest, we should be doing that at the end, after we did the job of the interrupt. But, well, that doesn't matter much here. Before another clock interrupt arrives, we are going to be done with this anyway. <laughs> because they are arriving 18.2 times per second, but from the point of view of CPU, this is quite a long time between consecutive ones. But let's play a little with hardware in a perhaps more visible way. Let me go back to some graphical mode programming. The favorite favorite mode of all in DOS. This is VGA mode. This is the segment address of video memory. <clears throat> the granularity of segments is one paragraph, 16 bytes. So to get a physical address from segment number, we just add another hexadecimal digit. Let's write to this memory in a loop to fill entire screen. Oh, let's start from zero this time. No, we started from zero, so we increase. 200 rows and let's make a color by a adding two coordinates. Finally, wait for a keystroke and exit program. This is to show a 256 color palette Every diagonal line is shows a single of these 256 colors In the upper left corner you can see the classic uh, 16 colors of EGA palette. This is the same, uh, the same colors that are used in text mode, where there are just 16 colors. And what I'm going to do now is to reprogram the colors directly on hardware. Let's take a look at some reference. In Ralph Brown's files there is not only interrupt and memory reference, there is also one for ports.
we have port uh, 3C8. When we write to it, we write an index of color register and then rewrite registers. Three bytes for each, writing them to point 3C9, the next port. In the order red, green, blue. And also this is 6-bit only. Only 6 bits are used to define uh, lightness of color, intensity of color. <clears throat> so first let's define some colors. Red and green, this should give us shades of yellow. But only 6 bits, so we should shift this by 2 bits to the right. To define gradient for 256 colors. Now the part is 3C8. This should start from color register 0. Now the X should be 3C9. And because we can just dump entire data here. 256 times 3 bytes for each register. Write them all to this port. Oh, I forgot BD. Here we have colors reprogrammed directly on hardware ports. Perhaps we can then modify image to be something more interesting. Instead of addition, let's do multiplication. And now with this image, I'm going to finish for today. Thank you for watching.